Hi, I'm Terry Ciani with High Prairie Life and it is pheasant season in South Dakota. I want to demystify game, prep, cooking, and great recipes. It's not hard at all and it tastes wonderful. So please join me for my fried pheasant salad. Hi, welcome to High Prairie Life. I'm Terry Ciani and it is pheasant season in South Dakota. And I want to demystify for you how to cook some pheasant which is so rich and flavorful that it used to be the go-to meat for recipes through the years since the 1700s. They were plentiful starting in Pennsylvania. And of course, we weren't settled that far west yet. So if you look at some of the older cookbooks, pheasant back in the East Coast was a go-to meat. But the thing about it is when I, I started hunting when I was 14 years old with my, hus my husband-to-be, and he was 16 and of course we couldn't afford to do anything so we'd go hiking in the fields and learning how to hunt and one thing I learned I always want to have on hand is a good pair of poultry shears not only do I have a pair in the kitchen but I also keep a pair in the back of my pickup I have um, my dog boxes and I have a nice long drawer because when you're hunting whether it's pheasant duck geese quail grouse whatever you're doing sometimes a bone will break and you're going to get a sharp edge and you don't want that to not only uh, you don't want to cut yourself on it. You also don't want to puncture the bag when you clean your game and you freeze them. That way everything's nice and neat, ready to go. Also great to cut the breastbone if you wanted to do that or to lay them flat and butterflies. So poultry shears are awesome. The other thing that's great about poultry shears is having them in your kitchen. You use them for chicken, for turkey, for fish. A lot of nice things you can use it for. So that's a tip for the day on poultry shears. Now when you hunt pheasant what happens of course is when you're shooting they have tiny little pellets that get into the breast meat and normally that's what I will do I'll breast my birds out and I wanted to just show you normally um, when you come home with your birds um, you're gonna have all these nice breasts and you're going to check the breast meat because sure enough there's gonna be some little pellets in there and there's one and you don't want to bite down on that because you certainly don't want to break a filling or chip a tooth or anything. So that's one thing you really want to check. It's a lovely meat. It has a nice feel to it. Make sure there's no little bits of feathers on it or sinew. You're just going to check it over and clean it. And then because we're making something really gourmet looking today that is so easy, we're making a fried pheasant salad. It looks phenomenal. It tastes great, but it's not hard to make. So, and it's a great way to use up your breast meat on your pheasants because again, if you have some shot in them, they're going to still look great and you're going to utilize all your meat. So what I do is I cut them with my fillet knife and I'll just cut straight down and pretty much in thirds because when you fry them up, they're going to make nice long strips. And then what you're going to do when you fry it up, now you can see here's a little bit of feather. Again, you're just trying to checking your meat, so it's totally appetizing when you serve your meat to your friends and family. And each salad plate will have like three strips on top, so you figure half a breast per person when you plan your menu and your dinner for your, your salad. So that is all ready to go. And now we're gonna go ahead. I'm going to leave this separate. This is raw meat. So please remember, go wash your hands. Don't contaminate anything. Leave your meat right on here. I'm just gonna go make the batter. We're gonna fry it up, assemble the salad, and we're gonna be all ready to go and enjoy it. So for this fried pheasant salad, something that makes it quote gourmet-ish is that we're going to be uh, warming up some walnuts. I have my cast iron skillet and I'm going to, you want about a medium heat. You don't want to burn because you're warming up these walnuts first and once they're warm then we're going to go ahead and we're going to pour in a fourth of a cup of sugar and you can't leave the pan when you do this. It's actually very easy to do but it's sensitive in doing it because the sugar could burn on you. So what's going to happen is, and these are warming at, well, as we speak, but the sugar will start liquefying along the edges of your pan. And that's when you really want to watch. Let it start liquefying a little bit, and then we're going to keep stirring it, because what's going to happen, all that white sugar 
is going to look like water and you're going to coat your walnuts or your pecans, whatever you're going to do. And as soon as they're coated and it's all melted, go ahead and take it off the stove and you're going to put it right away on a plate because the heat in the cast iron could continue cooking and you don't want to have a, a burnt taste in that sugar or the, nut, the walnuts. So this will just be a wonderful crunchy little touch of topping on your fried pheasant salad. Okay, and so you can see I have not uh, stirred the walnuts or the sugar. For you stirrers out there, and I have three daughters that are infamous for it, take your time, be patient, it's worth it. Okay, I can smell it starting to melt, and I can see little parts where it's starting to have a little shine, so I'm going to go ahead and move it for a minute. And it's still got a ways to go before it's going to start melting. Just a little bit of the edges are melting right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just even give it a little shake. And that way, again, the sugar is even. So I'm going to go ahead and let it keep sitting there, and you can see the edges a little bit where it's really thin coated. That will turn clear and liquidy first. So this is probably the longest thing out of the whole recipe to do, and maybe eight minutes total when we're done sugaring your walnuts but the sweet crunch that adds to that salad with your pheasant is worth taking the time to do this. Plus the fact, you will find they taste so good that you'll want to make a lot more of it and they last forever. You know, after they're cool, throw them in a Ziploc or a Pyrex dish or something and you'll snarf on those all week long. They're really good. All right, our walnuts have been sugared and are cooling on the plate. We're gonna make our batter now. This batter doesn't get any easier than this, okay? I've got one cup of flour, all-purpose flour, a cup of sherry. Now I use cream sherry. I don't tend to use cooking sherry. I like the flavor of the cream sherry better. So we're going to add a cup of the, the cream sherry, dump it right into the flour. I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt. I use, uh, this is kosher salt. I use kosher, I use sea salt, Himalayan, coral whatever you tend to like. I don't tend to like the salt I grew up with, which was quite a while ago, but it has silica in it, which is sand to keep it from clumping. You'd be surprised what a bitterness it adds to your cooking. So try to stay with the pure salts. Instead, you'll have a nicer tasting dish. So a teaspoon of pepper. And then I've got about a pinch of paprika. And then I'll add just a hint of nice color to it. So we're just gonna take the lumps out. We're gonna whisk this up. And then we're going to take this over to the fryer. I have my oil in the fryer at 355 degrees. And you're only frying those pheasant strips until they're golden brown. The meat will be perfectly done. Your doc, don't worry that you have to test it or it's going to come out raw. If you have your oil at 355 and it comes out golden, your meat's going to be just perfect. So there you go. Batter's ready to rock and roll. So this is my handy little counter fryer. I don't tend to fry that often, but if I was going to do two things, would be my fried pheasant salad and also my walleye. <laughs> They're my two favorite. So this ends up being perfect for what I need. I have my batter that's already been made and my pheasants all prepped, ready to go. So I've lowered the basket down into the oil, which is at 355 degrees. Again, you want that sitting down in the oil when you add your strips because you don't want the batter to stick to the wire meshing. Otherwise, it won't come out nice. So here's the batter. And what I'm going to do, I find honestly, it's just easier to just dip it in. Your fingers are going to get messy, but again, it's worth it. And it's fairly thick, and you're just going to go ahead and lay that down. Oop. I'm going to move away a little bit from that fryer so I don't get a burn. Always err on the side of caution. So see, that is pretty thick. Don't worry about it. It's going to make a really nice, flavorful coat on that pheasant. And when I drop something in the grease, I kind of hold it for a minute and then put it down in so that way, again, it won't stick. And we're just doing six little strips. If you had, you were going to serve for more people, then you're going to do several batches of it and you're just going to keep it. I would layer it on paper towel, put paper towel in between each of the uh, layers of pheasant and then you could keep it warm in the oven if you needed to before you were putting it on top of your salad. I'm going to go ahead and add 
think I can get all six of these in, being they're small. And again, as soon as they're done, they're going to be done when they're nice and golden, and that's the end of it. And last but not least, and this really would make enough for probably, oh, I don't know, six salads probably, as far as having enough batter. All right, we'll let that go ahead and cook, and I'll rinse my hands. And this fries up for maybe three to four minutes. It doesn't take very long at all. Yep, they're almost done. They're getting golden. All right, let's take this fried pheasant out of the oil. We'll put that right there on the plate. I'm going to turn this off so we don't end up with a grease fire. I'm going to unplug that as well. Now, just a word on the oil as well. Because, again, a lot of us don't fry too often, again, because it really is a treat. But what I would do is when this cools, pour your oil, put this Pyrex dish in your sink so you don't spill on your counter on the floor. Dump that in there, and then I use a funnel. And you want a Pyrex dish or a dish that has a spout so it's easy to pour in. Then I would go ahead and pour my oil in. I can cap it, and then if I'm going to save it, and reuse it for maybe one or two more times depending on what you're cooking. I would put it through a strainer so you don't have any bits. Reuse it maybe one more time and then I would throw it away when I was all done. We're to the end stage of our wonderful fried pheasant salad. So what we're going to make now is our dressing. Now I love balsamic vinegar and for years loved using the dark but then I got turned on to white balsamic and it is delicious, but I find the difference with this is that when I add this to my oil, and lemon juice, whatever I'm going to do, I find it's 50-50. So I'm going to add a half a cup of the white vinegar, white balsamic vinegar, and then I'm going to add a half a cup of my organic cold pressed extra virgin olive oil. When you don't add heat to your oil, when it's cold pressed, you're getting more nutrients in your olive oil. So that's why I'm using that. And it's a light oil. Just going to put that in there. Now I'm going to season with salt. If I find one thing that always falls flat for so many people is that you don't add enough salt. That's why when you see on all the cooking shows, I always talk to you about you have to taste your food. It's no different. You want to taste as you go along because when you're trying something and it's cooked and you're about ready to serve it, if you take a little tiny bite before you present and serve it and it tastes good but it's not quite where you want it to be, normally nine times out of ten is that you needed a little bit more salt to it and that's a good trick to remember. I'm going to add a little bit more salt to taste and then I'm going to go ahead and add a little black pepper. A lot of times in a salad dressing, salt would be approximately one teaspoon to a half a teaspoon of pepper. So I'm going to whisk this together. And this is why having a little pile of teaspoons on your counter when you're trying things works out really good because then you can tell if it's right or not. It actually needs a little bit more salt. Now the other thing I noticed with that was that I felt like there was a little bit heavy on the um, oil. So I'm going to add a little bit more vinegar to that because I want to have a little bit of that acidic taste to the vinegar as I try it and have it on my salad. Much better. Alright, I'm going to set this off to the side. Now what I really have to do, move this over a little bit, when you cut an onion, don't cut the stem part because that will keep it fresh longer in your refrigerator if you're not going to use the whole thing. So I just cut a little bit off, move that to the side. Now what I do for a salad, I don't like chunks of things in my salad. I tend to like them cut thinner so it enhances all the other lettuce and vegetables and things that you're putting in it. So I'm going to make some rings for this salad and I'm just going to cut it very thinly. And that way, the purple, of course, I love color when you're cooking, so I'm going to use this purple so that it looks pretty on the salad as well. So that's probably enough, because this salad is going to be really for two people. 
So we're going to assemble it. I'm going to move that because onions make me cry like crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Now I have my salad spinner. I got some gourmet greens. I got I was in the grocery store and got some organic baby greens. And they are delicate and light. They're pretty. But I always wash everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Always got to wash your fruits and vegetables. And I love my little spinner. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. Now don't forget when you wash your lettuce, if you need to, and I have a clean dish towel right here that I set aside, a lot of times I'll put my lettuce greens on a towel because if your lettuce is wet at all, it's going to water down your dressing and then it won't taste as good and as vibrant as you want it to. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this off. I'm going to just dry my little greens. All right. I'll go ahead and put those right in the bowl. As my cup runneth over, All right, so now I am going to go ahead and garnish the top of this first. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of these nice thinly sliced onions on top. I can't wait for you to try this. If you love pheasant, or if you haven't tried it, and you're not sure if you will like it or not, I think this will be a great intro recipe for you. I'm going to put just stud some cherry tomatoes around. You certainly can cut them in half if you want. Um, dried cranberries. Uh, dried cherries work very nicely as well. This adds a nice another piece of tart and fruity flavor to it. Let's see, our candied walnuts. And that crunch added to it is just wonderful. All right, and now we're going to add our fried pheasant. And I just kind of go around in a circle. This would even be a nice luncheon. If you wanted to serve that for some friends coming over. All right, then we're going to add our dressing. Just give that a quick little whisk. Now you don't want to sop your salad, you want to dress your salad. So you're just adding enough to moisten and flavor, not to make it so overpowering that you don't taste all the other goodies that are on it. All right, I think that's probably enough. And that salad dressing, if you have left over, save it all week long. You can use it when you come home from work at night. All right, I have a nice little tray here for myself. And I'll tray some salad with a nice piece of pheasant. Let's see if I can get a nice walnut in there. I only eat this normally in the fall and winter when my pheasants are out. So, oh, let's get a little piece of lettuce with that. The hint of sherry that is in your batter is lovely with the pheasant. If you feel you don't have enough dressing on, that you wanted a little bit more citrusy, please add that. I hope you really enjoy it. It's one of my favorite family recipes. We look forward to it every year, and I hope it becomes one for you as well.